I'm just going to turn that aircon a bit colder down the back there. If, you get, if it's too cold, just let us know. Let's go the water. Everyone's good? Okay, great. Okay, so everyone, thanks for coming along. Um, my name's Doug Bird, and I'm going to try and help you guys out between Wahoo and Yellow and Tuna. We're talking Yellow and Tuna, like I call them, inshore tuna or domestic tuna or coastal tuna. They're not the big tuna we get out wider. Um, we will be doing that a bit later on, but it's a totally different scenario. Okay, so the bigger lures, oh, you will get on some of these lures, but anyhow, we're not talking about that tonight. So, is anyone here fish for the old thing out wide at all? Anyone have a crack at it? Good, so we'll save time on that one. Okay, uh, second thing is, um, how many people have caught a wahoo? How many guys have caught a wahoo? You ever have? And um, how many have caught the elephant tuna? Okay, and the guys catching the wahoo, we troll skirts or hard bodies? Hard bodies. Hard bodies, yeah. Skirts. Skirts. And how do you get it back home? Bait. <coughs> bait. Oh, bait. Oh, well, there we go. Three different answers. How's that? They take any of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and um, how about the elephant tuna? Skirts. Skirts, mate. And the other guys with the elephant tuna? Cubes. Cubes, okay, good. That's what we're going to talk about. Mine was on a live bait. <coughs> live bait. We get three different answers, okay, that they get into as well. So we're in for it, we're catch fish. Okay, so tonight I've got a whole heap of stuff here, but I'm going to try and cover everything as much as I can in the time period we have that boring you guys too much. Um, but what I'm mainly going to do is um, cover probably the yellow fin tuna first, uh, and then the wahoo after that. And uh, we'll start bait fishing for a while, after it's already healthy, and then we'll progress to the lure side, and then the lure side will then progress to the wahoo, if that makes sense. Um, before we go there, though, the big problem is it's bloody rains, and it's had a lot of rain. And um, what, what I was hoping to talk about more of is the clarity of the water and how the wahoo come in, the yelping come in, but that's not going to happen at the moment. Um, if you guys, anyone go fishing today? Nice. You went out today? Yeah. And it's like the. Like uh, the, it's a combo river, there is. <laughs> so, like, it's, it's terrible. And um, yeah, if you guys see some pictures here, this is disgusting. Um, unfortunately, while the hen stand keeps flowing over, right, it just keeps coming out. Until the hen stand stops, then the clarity will clear up. We've got a pretty strong current one that I set today there at the moment, trying to get two and a half, two knots in on the 24s, which is pretty fast for the 24 February. So, um, that will clear it up and get some subtleties that will push that current in a bit closer and clear it up even more. We've had a week in the wall, there's got a whole lot of rain as well, so you've got double whammy, you've got more of these roll in the water and you've got a leak of rain, which is just killed it. So, what was like one of our best mackerel seasons with Wahoo really kicking in and yellow and kicking in? It's now, it's in five days, going faster around. But anyhow, but Study what we'll do tonight and uh, and then put it into action about two or three weeks' time. That'll clear up. Okay. So, yellowfin yeah, tuna. Um, I've drawn a picture here, um, which is a scenario I'd like to do with the 24 Fathom Reef um, when I fish up for mackerel, right? And I've got to catch as many yellowfins as I do in mackerel community. It's a very good way to fish. And um, and I was going to draw, draw it first as I'm talking to you. I'm trying to find my little pen So, Let's just say um, <coughs> that's north, and that's obviously south down here, east and west, and the wind's blowing slight northwest in the morning, right? And I'll make it up here, anchor up here. And the current's running north to south this way, but my boat's sort of swimming a bit off. Up here. So what I'm doing is I'm using really light gear, um, which Jake's going to bring up in a moment. Uh, light spin gear, like sort of 20 30 pound braid, uh, four down size reel, and uh, simple spin rod. And smaller overheads, like um, the TLD 15 size, and about 20 pound line, mono, and his mono. Um, and I'm running my baits out, uh, one would be no sinker at all, one would be about a, probably a one or two ball, which is about a B size ball sinker. Next one would be about a three size, which is like this one thumbnail. And I'll stagger those three baits or four baits um, at different depths. So the first one on the surface, second one's probably about 10 feet down, next one's down about probably 30, 40 feet, 10, 15 meters, and the last one's down fairly low with the fish just shoved on my 
my sound was really low. And I'm then just chopping up the pillies into, um, I chop the front half, I always use the tail section, I thought it works better than the head section, if you have found that out, you will. Uh, for some reason, it just seems to get more fish. And uh, in the head section, I'm half of the chopper, about five or six slices, thanks, Jake. Can I rip up No, that's fine, that's good. That's it was. Um, thank you. This one. And, uh, and just we're looking up heaps and heaps, just like you spot these fish, right? Uh, same scenario. The thing, the difference is, instead of using a little um, two hook snail rig like we did in our spotty mackerel seminar, like so, I'll pass this around. Um, I'm using the single hook, small than half, um, two hooks and half fairly. So the back tail section, I'm using the tail and I'm chopping the other half, the back half in half, if that makes sense, and using the second. Uh, last piece. So two that's your cube up pieces. So I filter it and I'll cut it about there. Now I've got two two pieces to use there, that actually comes up like that. So and uh, and then the two pieces that I'll use. The front part I have caught them on the section but, but it gets really soft into the gardens and then the hook becomes a bit uh, exposed and it just doesn't seem to hide as good and work as good. The hair's useless. So that's the best section, that's the second, third, fourth, and build shit. Um, and I'm using two or three oh, hooks, same size of that little rig coming around. Very small. I'm using a 30 pound fluorocarbon lead. I don't use wire. Problem is, this time of the year, normally the water's clear, you get as many mackerel as you do two months or something, and um, you get bitten off a shitload a lot. So the problem there is, what do I do? If I don't get the bite, so I use wire on the other thing, I might take wire. So um, you still take a chance and just fish my arm and wig up a bit. That's what it is. Um, but whilst my burly trial is coming out here, I'm spinning um, little nails like this fella here, 20 and 40 grams, up to about 60, and spin it in the burly trial. Okay, so I've got, I've got a line out here, a line out here, and another one here. This one's out on the top. This one's down fairly deep, this one's down really deep. But I'm casting down into the belly trial, I have my lure sink into the belly trial, and spin it back up to the boat. I'll also drop it down deep into the belly trial, and might just work it back up to the surface, one quite fast. You will see the yellow pin tuna when you cast it, when you're throwing it into cubes, it little bits and pieces, you actually see them shoot out from under the boat. The little light flashing past them. Have you ever seen that before? When they're on, they're just like that, they're just, they're just seeing shooting around. And uh, let's hook up straight away. Especially you find they, they you get a bit more aggressive hookups if it's from the vertical? With the mackerel uh, sometimes yeah, they you prefer do. it. Yeah, you do. 100%. You drop it down, mate. rip it through them, and they seem to prefer that. that that's right. It all depends on current. If you get a lot of current, definitely go to the vertical. Because um, the bait just gets taken away pretty quick, but they're sitting there. Um, and they'll be there a bit deeper. Um, if you've got not much current and slow sink, I find they come up a bit higher, like a bit more. If I cast out that one, one straight away, so I'm not fishing, I'll let it sink down maybe 10 meters and then crack it back. Um, but vertical is awesome, especially for the spotties and Spanish as well. Yeah. Um, but here's the bigger size, it's the 40s or 60s. The big one. So um, if you get that technique happening, and you don't have to be devoted, one thing. I'm assuming that I'll put eight, but I'll put out like five or six lines, but it's main here. But I'll put a line out too for a live little big elephant or Spanish whatever. That'll be on live though. Um, so any questions on that at all? No? Um, the use mono or fluoro? Fluoro is what I use. Fluoro, yeah. It, even the elephant a little raspy teeth. Like the one fish is really raspy, not quite that sort of thing. So um, I would prefer the, the mono, mono 20 pounds like, sorry, mono 40 pounds like fluoro 20 in the brazen resistance. 30 is a good size in fluoro. And uh, just a meter. Yeah. Um, I'd find though, if you're running a sinky, you can't run it down your bait guys. It doesn't get the bites like it does if you drop it about half a meter up your line a little bit better. And just run a really small swivel, little black one. This one. Yep, it's a bad one, those. 
Okay. Um, other than that, we don't just like that for Wahoo. Okay, Wahoo is um, a task force, but we don't actually do much bait fishing for Wahoo, except for trolling and baits, as some of us said before. But um, we covered that in aqua fishing, so let's jump back on that one to see how we do it. Just a single look at the mouth, and just a treble in the back, or two trebles in the back, or slime, or whatever. And real slow trolling on the downrigger, or just slow trolling in the back, or a really big, badass, eight ounce uh, barrel to cut down a bit. Uh, but um, that's it. Okay, so that's the sort of that's actually my little um, just a little micro jig rod I use. That's what the kids find my kids actually um, the four thousand sustainer. But that thing there we use for many things. Anything, anything from jigging, micro jigging through to um, which we can do as I said before um, the yelping and definitely um, for just bait fishing. With a soft tip, so let's take it down. And it's got a 20 pound braid on So 20 pound braids um, and up, 30 is a bit more safety. Um, okay, if you want to troll for a little yellow pin around here, they will take hard bodies, as one gentleman said. Uh, but I prefer to use little skirts, little things like this here. Um, unfortunately, you get everything else like Macturin and then you got the Benito, things about it as well, and bodies. Um, but um, they just seem to really like the little skirts, okay? So, nice to cover those around. Size. How far out the back do you run? Yeah, those? a long way. So, um, especially even like, like long tail and yellow bin um, are not like mildly closer, they're further back. It's like five inches away. So, I like to run my skirts that size probably around um, 60 metres at the closest. So, okay. is that just that the fish won't come close? Those uh, fish won't come close to the bait generally? They're always cleaner and they just okay. seem to work better. A little bit shy because you know tuna yep. are very sound wise and uh, they go down a little bit and flop back up over the distance. So, I, think so. I don't think they're uh, like a mile and three prisoners, they'll come off the back of the boat, but tuna don't do that very often. No, very often. I don't know if any of you guys ever caught big tuna in the short corner at all, or a tuna, which is just close to Sindula. I never have ever, it's always a long way at the back. So, 60 metres in tuna, okay. Um, other words you can troll for tuna, you've got one in bay, and also a bit, look, this is like a small size for Wahoo, but the perfect size for tuna, okay? Um, that sort of thing there, so I'll be pretty much like these in bay, but it's plastic all around. Um, that's the sort of thing. Dougie, what's the speed with these, mate? What's the speed with these? Yeah, the speed wise, wise um, you can, like, when we talk about the Wahoo at the moment, Wahoo you're trolling about 12 to 15 knots, or 14 knots. Um, the only bycatch you'll get when you're trolling for a wahoo is if you have any other fish that will hit at that speed. Um, so you can go that fast if you want to. Particularly there's wahoo around, I'll, I'll up that into a little bit. Like we're catching um, wahoo now while we're trolling the hard bodies from the at 6 to 8 knots. And they will hit that speed, but you'll get a heck of a lot more if you're trolling at sort of 12 knots. Okay? Um, so, the yellowfin tuna, um, if I know there's only wahoo around with like this yellowfin around, I'll put it in about eight. So faster than my macro lures, a bit faster. Um, but my lures are a lot further back, and and uh, that's the sort of size I'm using. Where for, like for wahoo, I like to really use that sort of size. Uh, yeah, so jet heads, current heads, uh, you can't use your little marlin lures though, folks, because I just bought this to show you what. I've got what I mean by this. So that's got a cut base, okay? So mm -hmm. like at about eight knots, these start to blow out of the water. They don't troll very good at high speed in that type of base. Doesn't matter if the lure is that big or that big. Um, they're designed to set about six knots, seven knots, and push and come out, push and come out. Um, where a wahoo type lure or, or a, a um, yelping tuna lure, uh, generally, it's just the speed starts it's just below the surface and just trolls. It doesn't have hardly any action bar the colour and it just it, it gets them going. I don't know why, because there's no action at all bar that going on like that. So, bubble trail, they do make bubble trails, but obviously you can't troll that far at high speed. Um, talk about bubble trails in the normal type, lures like ones going around. So, they work really, really well at high speed. Some have jet heads, some don't. 
probably should know that when you're trolling for um, wire food, you're obviously using wire on your rig, you're not using mono. That's, that's to the swivel or to the, the little loop that you're going to hook onto as the leader. Um, for yellowfin tuna, it's funny, once you get up to speed, um, they don't really care about the wire. Okay? So when you're bait fishing, you get, it's mine only. When you're following at high speed, they don't care. So um, go back to wire, there's a chance they can get a wire hook or a spanish or a spotty. So um, just use wire. Okay. Um, probably, probably better we need to know when it's like this, isn't it? Is that all around like the sort of 24 area? Well? Yeah, so we're talking about in the areas um, in the moment, but yeah, definitely, mate. Um, had it not been raining, I'll talk about that now. Yeah. Had it not been raining, I would have said definitely at the moment, I've heard guys get galloping in just behind the beach. Yeah. And with size, like 14 kilo ones, you know. Um, but the 50 metre line, 24 fathoms diamond reef, uh, down to sort of focus reef, even sometimes on the gravel patch, but not much, uh, is a good area. Um, I sent you guys all, you guys get that message today on the phones. Yeah. So you'll see um, the red lines. That's the sort of depth line, if you zoom out, you'll see the depth. That's the sort of um, the, the runs I do when I'm chasing the elephant tuna, just troll the skirts only, and troll them those, those little skirts that I'm turning around now. So I'll just put a day in there, I'm just going to say, I'm just going to troll the tuna. And that's what we do. And, um, but normally, May, April, late April, early May, I find the best time for the tuna close. The big tuna are wider, uh, like sort of all this September, October, and the little tuna in uh, around now, from now to Mate. So we just need a little bit clearer, but um, we were going to go, I'm supposed to go and maybe go fishing tomorrow morning for wild and June, believe it or not. Um, but um, those spots? Uh, <laughs> those spots, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, not, not really. Uh, maybe not really. Because the uh, water's, yeah, you've got to find a clean water. Yeah. So I believe at the moment it's probably going to to around about 60 or 70 meters deep. Um, but I just had a mate was out last Friday, not the week long one before. Before the rain, um, at the bad 12 B and C, yeah. and like some really good dolphin fish there, some like 1.4 meter, 1.3 meter ones. So no one's been chasing them for a while, yeah. and they stack back up on the on the bad. So just keep that to yourselves over the weekend. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's what we do. Yeah. 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 And the, maybe the elephant, the little ones don't. It's really funny. Big ones have wide little elephant. I don't catch much outside of say 60 or 70 meters. If the old ones out the 50s, but not very often. That's in the a big gap between 300 meters or 400 meters and, and 60 meters. I don't know where they go, but they go somewhere. Um, but they seem to be two different, um, not the, obviously the same species, but they're two different um, thinking fish. One's coastal and one's out wide. I think the big ones go up. I must grow up and go up wider because obviously the more um, more put up out there, big sharks, the big wahoo, you can find the rest of marlin, marlin like yellowfin tuna as well. So, um, a bit of a food source, I guess. <coughs> yeah, so um, tomorrow, uh, yeah, we'll kick out until we get to the clean water. And um, we can do that. Let's say now, it's supposed to be 10 knots in the morning, 15 knots. Uh, the southern guys are now saying 20 and 20 gets two knots of current or three knots, so there's not the nicest. So I don't know what we're going to do yet. We might have to look at Sunday, I think it's Sunday. Yeah. You guys go to the weekend? You guys go to the weekend? You might go Sunday. Okay. Yeah, the weather's, um, the weather's <laughs> stage on Saturday. Tomorrow's so obviously you can see 20. Saturday is 10 knots in the morning, I think 10 15, and getting up to 20 knots. In the day is a don't go risk later. And Sunday is the day again. So Sunday now is 10 knots down the day. And Monday morning is 10 knots until 1 o'clock and then comes in the So, yeah, we're going to go. And there's no swell. There was a big swell last week, it was gone already. And the bar looks not too bad, so it's good to get plenty of tired in the morning. So it's all good to go early morning at that level. Um, so, the other thing I didn't talk about, which I should talk about, is um, just service lures for uh, yellowfin tuna. Um, is uh, you can run little stick baits, you can run little poppers, uh, and you can run little uh, minnows, as in this type of thing here. Do you think you use these little, these little piles, little heavy ones? Okay. Up north, oh, yeah. you have these. Oh, 
So up north, um, like, so, sitting in the headlands, um, they're the kick butt one for catching long tail tuna and, and tuna, uh, and also muscle And catching um, mackerel as well, the rocks. Um, I've got a couple of, or well, quite a few customers now I've got into, and a couple of put me onto it, that have been using these around the bass for dolphin fish and mahu, uh, and doing exceptionally well. Um, I had one customer that was out wide, it was at wide wide, um, that was coming across a floating bunch of uh, floats that were just drifting along with a big rope of it. He thought it was bad until he went back to look for it and it was gone because we were drifting south. It was just drifting. But um, they pulled off, I don't know, like a 15 or 20 wahoo session casting those, uh, just drifting with it. Like, this is like a fish farm around it. So um, they're exceptionally good little lure. They're expensive. They get of those prices, but they are expensive, but they um they just they really do work. And as I said, like my customers, at the end of the day, the amount of money spent on fuel, I mean, the lures are probably the cheaper part of the day. Mm -hmm. um, but you can get the right lures, don't get the cheaper wrong lures, because they don't work. That's good. And at the time of day? Time of day, uh, well, that's an area that we're going to use the floating basket casters. <laughs> uh, but the dolphin fish, uh, so you went to the bads. Um, you need to go, uh, like the first boat out there, first few boats are the ones that get the fish, and once you get a bit later, they, they will go off at about 8 o'clock because you've got like 10 boats pounding them, um, or 15 or 20 boats. Um, but you'll get another run, so a lot of charter boats that go up to the 50s, they stop at the pads on the way back because everyone's gone home, and the fish are back on the chill again. And you get the afternoon bite, or whatever that bite is when the moon rises, um, for the two hours after high tide. The time of day it is, so it's the high tides at 12, there'll be lots of light at 2 o'clock afternoon. So that's when they get into it and they get these too. So um, don't ever think that's only in the morning, you know, early first boat there, it's not always <coughs> the case. But it, that is the best one, mate. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, but yeah, things like, I'll check that one once you do. Um, things like these, that's probably the biggest copper. Um, this is nothing too, I don't know if you guys ever used it. Any of you see this at all? Just some archie flashes. Yeah, they're not really good. Um, they're like a hybrid, they're a metal, a lead, or a metal, like a metal inside, but they've got an um, outside coating. So that enables them to have a bit of action, a bit of action there. Yeah. yeah. Um, so obviously no fish for your work or anything. Yeah, from the wrong spot. Yeah. Um, but this sort of thing is um, really good for casting in this scenario here. So that's the Samaki one coming around. Um, but poppers and stuff, um, in this case here, if the yellowfin are darting around, there's not much current and they're feeding towards the top, then definitely get a stick bait or a popper, all that um, rapala thing coming around, and then work that um, pole early area. So they'll just be there. Look. And once you get that early going, I don't know where they come from, but they just come and come and come and come. And we've been out there like, it's just been, because they're fast. Just little bit sipping, sipping, sipping. But they're around sort of four to eight kilos in size. Really nice eating size. And uh, yeah, some of them will pack with us on eight fish over there, plus lose a few, you know. And get sharks. Sharks are a problem at the moment, too, guys. It's, it's so bad. It's so bad. So many guys, so many customers getting heads back all the time. Even half a wahoo back. So it's not like a wahoo. But they're fast. So I want to find a big wahoo back. But anyhow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what sharks are in. So, that's no problem with this sort of gear. Um, you know, some guys say, I've never had the scenario, but some guys say if you use light gear, the, the sharks, the fish doesn't put out the stress that on heavy gear the fish does, that makes sense? So the sharks hone in on that stress and eat the fish on the heavy gear. Where on light gear, so they can probably get it in, and um, doesn't have to me though. And then the, if the fish doesn't admit the stress and the sharks don't uh, sort of pull up onto it. But, for me, every time I take the slowest picture, I get the English shark. So I don't know, it's really good for that. Does anyone have that scenario where they don't get shark on the water gear? No, I don't get shark, I think. Mean. Um, but um, sharks are drama. So, up the Yankee. <laughs> Bring out the big guns. So, like, um, yeah, I don't use this for strong eyes, but I've probably sent too much of that. But, um, when you get that light out the back, this one here, or the fourth right out, just use something like that. It's like a Saragosa or whatever you got. 
in that uh, sort of 50 to 80 pound brain style. Because um, whatever is, he's alive, it's generally good size, and the sharks will be straight on to get the moment. Okay. Um, probably about it um, on the little yellow um, I The one thing I haven't done, tried with the yellow pin yet is micro chicken. Has anyone ever done micro chicken on the yellow pin yet? Because, uh, like, obviously, everyone's been micro chicken for a few years now, but species are evolving, or our fishing is evolving on the species of using micro chicks. I dare think they definitely work really well. In that scenario, there's not much current, and um, you can get down and scale the bird trap and get back up. Similar work, the same format, but a slower technique yeah. and more fluttery sort of I reckon they, they nail it. Um, but it is sort of like about 60 to 100 gram chicks. Okay. Um, probably about it on the yellow. Any other questions on the yellow channel? Places where to go. You should have asked that question. I would. Besides what we talked about before. Um, okay, so. I've done probably best, as I said, on the diamond reef at Brunswick River Good, but one of my favourite spots um, is definitely down on three days. I ran the nine mile reef, we've done perception with there, we've put them there on stick baits and poppers as well, casting the reef. Has anyone here fished the nine mile? I haven't yet. Seriously? I'm going down on the weekend, but the water might be too dirty. Yeah, it will be dirty, maybe. I saw that picture. <laughs> 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 <That's ugly. laughs> Um, okay, forget that. <laughs> just imagine it was two weeks ago. Um, it's an incredible place to fish. I remember talking about the Wahoo. It is my number one Wahoo go to spot and has been for probably 30 years now. Um, but we've got it. I fish my brother Paul in a lot and uh, we've caught every time. It's just like fishing and you see no match either. Sometimes they're catching like Wahoo and, and uh, Yelpin tuna on, on sick baits and stuff. That's what the nine model is like. Has anyone ever fished seven or you thought like a casual? No, you guys need to get out. Okay, so 7th Reef is up on lookout, same scenario. So the top, it's a little bit uh, deeper than uh, Nine Mile. Nine Mile Reef comes from about 45, 48 metres up to around about 8 metres on top. We played on the top. It's about probably 2 and a half k, 2 k's long, about 700 metres wide, and it's sort of shape uh, wide at the, at the northern end and narrow at the back. And uh, where seventh reef I might look at, uh, and the nine mile cracks are ending over about two metres as well, they actually suck up and dump it, it's pretty much at so many close calls, because that's where the best corner is. Um, but the seventh reef is, uh, I think it comes up from about 50 to about 30 metres, uh, by memory. And um, it's similar size, uh, but you're fishing a lot deeper. But they can't stick baits and they do it the same. The fish will still come up 10 or 15 metres. Grab your, your lure. Okay. Really great fun. Um, at the moment. Uh, so, the yellowfin tuna, um, the nine mile reef, 100%. Uh, the, uh, the diamond reef or southport, occasionally get them close. You will get them at the back of the jumping pin as well, the bar. Um, they come quite close there, you get long tail with them as well. Uh, Southern's reef, which is in about 50 metres, just out from the pin, up a bit. Uh, that's a good area as well. Um, and um, how many people here don't have a boat? Okay, a couple of you guys. Do you guys fish with other guys at all? Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. And uh, do you have a mate fish with a boat at all, mate? No, I just go with charter all and fish. On charter boats? Yes. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. <coughs> well, mine's a jet ski, so it's sort of jet ski, a little yeah. boat. Yeah, jet ski. Yeah. Anyone here got jet skis at all? Okay, so a few of the jeskies, that's right. So same scenario for you guys. So the only thing is that that's you don't have to drop on the jeskies, yeah. right? So um, but it, it's hard to build up a group because it just disappears from you. So stick to yeah, do the trial link and stuff. Trial links to go. And like guys on jeskies are usually that session as well um, on mackerel and, and tuna and everything. Wahoo, uh, very impressive actually. Um, my wife wants me to get one, but I don't know yet. Do you have to use cube pilchards and things for your bird? Uh, Can you use that? Yeah, you know, you do. Um, because that's what they're feeding on. When you start using um, like mulched up the old early munches at the back of the boat, yeah. it brings up all the live bait, which is a great thing because they get smashed when they come around, but it'll bring up all the yakas and sweep and stuff. You probably don't really want to get into your bait. Yeah. You're trying to keep that stuff away from your baits. <laughs> So, when you use cubes, it's um, 
a little bigger fish that are invited to eat it. The smaller you go, the smaller the fish are going to come up to your belly trying to start to crap out your face. And bait presentation, for the, and especially gallopin, is really important. So they keep it they're cooked and sealed with bait. Once it gets pecked and gets exposed a bit, uh, it's not an hour So uh, I would definitely say filters are number one because they stink and they work the best. Uh, it smells exceptional. And um, and they just are easy for them to eat. Or if you chop up, say, garbage or something like that, it's quite hardy. The different type of fish is going to eat it. And the elephant tuna have a very small mouth. Uh, so it gets fatigued. Even bigger ones don't have a mouth on, like a, like a mackerel or something like that. Yeah, more mm -hmm. yeah so um, keep it compact. Uh, for the guys to get back to you guys who don't have boats, for those of you who do have boats, if you want to meet any of these guys later or vice versa, introduce yourselves. Um, but uh, you really need a boat um, to do this. Um, but, as I said to the gentleman down the back there, if you apply um, that technique, even early with the rocks, you'll bring fish around. But you want to make sure that there's bait in the water and there's uh, fish, the surface fish that have been at the time. They'll come in on it, otherwise you'll see it gets immersed or there's a lot of fish that are going to grab out of it. It's funny, when, you, when you're doing one type of fishing, you hate the other type of fishing, right? But when you, in the other days, if it's a reverse role, you want to catch that fish, you want that fish. So um, you've got to keep it in mind, focus on one objective and, and do it right. Okay, but I'm getting sidetracked again, but today they smashed the snap very close. <laughs> totally relative what to look at tonight. <laughs> But just for you guys to know, if the weather is it's good but the water's dirty and there's no mackerel we call it this weekend, 100% um, go chase an hour on an 8x of the course. I've heard a few guys in today that didn't intentionally go chasing them but they had fillies, trolling fillies around, nothing happening. <coughs> so lots of little arcs in the bottom. Because when you're those nutrients coming out of the seaway, they just come in from out wide or whatever and they feed. And they're in feed mode. So one of my mates today he got 22 fish over 47 meters. Around the place. Yeah, decent size. Yeah, he got a 70, 265s, yeah. and um, got blown away heaps. And he ran out of bait, and he switched to plastics and micro jigs. And then smash, smash, smash. Got some, got some fish. That 24s went back into 18s. So it's just sit there. He said. Yeah. So that was today. Today. It's yeah. Is that like the same anchor up? Yeah, yeah, exactly the same scenario, that's right. Yeah, exactly right. And five one, but there's a bit of current today. So for those of you, how many people have electric outputs on the boats? Yeah, so today, uh, it's popped up on uh, about eight. The one the current. A bit of all the wind, a northwest wind as well. But the current was just uh, about two knots. So you just had three balls here, which is the thumb knot size. And casting it up and it's coming down very quick. But as soon as we got to the zone, it just cut off the outside. Is, it, is there a preference with the winds? Yeah, there is. I hate the woodlies. The woodlies. No, the woodlies are, uh, I, I pull up pearlies on the woodlies. I have put mackerel pearlies uh, and uh, spotties on the woodlies. I haven't put many. Yellow bit tuna, I like east or, or southerly. Yep. Or no wind. Uh, and um, yeah, generally speaking, the best wind is no wind. Probably <laughs> 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 southerly flowers. Yeah. Little southerly. Um, and uh, Westleys are really clear to beach up, and you look at schools of tuna. Uh, it's funny, once you go north, then those go off. But if you go direct west, then the southwest, yeah. uh, the mackerel quite well. The tuna will definitely scrub on the back of the beach. For some reason, they're going really close. And it's when you get the bait going, the birds are happening, and on those really calm, calm days when the west is really close, and uh, you get a lot of tuna, a lot of long tail, and, uh, and a few yellow things swim as well. But then, yeah, if you get a chance on the weekend, so you get the so snap at the moment. It's very early, I wasn't going to talk about that until May. Really early. Um, anyhow, so get back to um, our next piece, which is. So, another question on the, on the yelp? Uh, all good? Okay, so Wahoo. Wahoo is my favourite, one of my favourite fish to catch. Only because they scream that reel, they scream the reel so fast and so hard. Um, although, one job did tell me he caught one just round straight into the post. Obviously, you've got one who's wearing a straight coat, but I can't imagine the scenario. Must have been a sick wahoo. <laughs> but my series of six species, and um, as we all know, they, they sort of have 70 k's an hour. 
So when you're trolling at like 12 to 14 knots, which is the speed cost, 23 k is an hour GPS for 12 knots is about the perfect speed. Okay? And when you go down to you might get to 15, and you might get back to about 10 or 11. But you're pretty well on the plane just right so then as far as you can go without getting too wet because it's a bit slow. The boat nose has to get down a little bit so you can go faster at lower revs. And uh, line, long way back. So um, if I'm trolling, I'm only troll skirts, but there are hard bodies that will do that speed. Um, but the little skirts going around, uh, they'll be the furthest one out. They'll be 120 meters back. Okay? Your standard size wire wiggle, which is the size here, let's go and get that off for a sec. Pass it around. Oops. Well packaged. Um, these guys here, well, just max them. <coughs> so, so they create a big um, jet trail. So a little bit of little head that's only 15, 20 mil across. Uh, looking back at, back at it from just from flybridge, it looks about that big going through the water. So it looks a lot bigger than it is. So people are who love them, you know, they just hone in and uh, want to eat the bad things a little tuna or it might be but a little lure. Run double yeah, so good question. So with Wahoo, um, I prefer to run, I run both. If I've got people on the boat that don't know what they're doing, as I always say, I never run double hooks because it's too dangerous. Particularly if I'm trying to do everything and they're, they're the ones that are pulling fish in. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, but double hook up, double hooks at high speed definitely hook up better. Okay. Because the fish is coming in at such a high speed, it's got to be perfectly. They, they're very good, they do. But they're going to be perfectly to grab it. And the miss is just that single time ones that you will miss it. You love it. I've seen a few guys have like water balls. Is it water? The little camera? Um, yeah. they, they put on your lures and watch it swing. And um, a few of my customers are, um, what's his name? Roscoe, he was doing it on his jet ski. Um, you see, and they come zoom up, and they're, they're fighting it, but they're not getting hooked up. But if you have two hook rig in there, you can get hooked up better. So um, it's just, but it's dangerous. So yeah, two looks dangerous. So, one looks dangerous. One looks dangerous too. Yes, that's right. So then, yeah. what for? What reason? Ah, uh, just when you get the fish onto the boat on a jet ski in particular. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, limited to your space. Um, as long as you got the fish boat done. Well, that's true. <laughs> it's, it's worth it. It's worth it. Priorities. Yeah, that's right. True fish man. How did you see that done? Sorry? How'd your brother go? Oh, yeah, I saw him on the This is cool. Yeah, that was a classic. Um, yeah, it's right down to the well, too, where the, where the hooks join onto the tree. And it's leaky or cutting. Been there, done been that? that. Yeah, yeah, I think a lot of us have been there and done that. And, uh, and I've been hospital for a few times. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's just those hooks are big hooks. So you're talking eight eight nine O's. Um, the gate bottom is about 30 mil. It goes in and goes in. And um, it's pretty hard to get them out of that size. And they've got a bit of barb on them. Um, but it's at that sort of speed, you cannot afford to, unless you want to let fish go, you can't afford to follow them, them down a little. It needs a bit of meat to hang on. So what happens when you troll them at that speed? They don't ever call a fish at that speed yet. I'd love mm. to do that. Seriously. Um, okay. You're trolling your lures and um, you can set the 120 meters back at 180, you're close to 160 to 80. You've got three lines. I normally control three lines at that speed, it's a bit, bit more trickier. And um, when you hook up at that speed in uh, the ratchets, you hear the ratchets spread out at that speed. And, um, and by the time you sort of register, there's already 60 meters gone because you're going fast. And, um, and if you slow down too quick, uh, but from go to woe, the hook just falls out. So you have to slow down gradually. So there's another 60 metres gone. So you've got be about 300 metres of line out by the time you actually start to fight fish. So it's a long way out. Shark country, <laughs> for sure. Um, but um, I use, I do use, I do troll with my little spin, my big spin reels. Um, they down braid. I don't troll, I did troll the other day on the Spanish mackerel. 
um, with uh, 50 and 60 of them like saddles, but we were spoiled. We couldn't, we couldn't stop whether it would be Spanish or spot or uh, whatever they were, whatever they were. Uh, this way he'll stop most things. But I traditionally troll with my for Waifu with, I want to see the fish. So I'm trolling like 50 wide Tiagras. Uh, all you could use three six old pen sanders, six those back in the day. Uh, but that's the sort of thing, uh, if I want to get a 20 or 30 kilo Waifu to the boat. And my brother Paul, he trolls with 80 on his chest. I know they're big reels, but. Um, if you've got spin, big spin gear like that, it just needs to be strong. You need to and have plenty of 400 metres long on your head. That's what Paul's That's why I've always liked the overheads, the get all big, the big fish, the line capacity. 100%. So I can do 400 of 80 on 20 day on the um, but I can't put mono more than 400 metres of 30 pound on there. So you've got to go for 8 on spin. Um, on overheads, um, I, I do actually go in my room. I do use TLD twenties as well on TLD thirty two speeds. Uh, I've got eighty pound braid on this too. So have you ever tried with your electric reel? Yeah, I haven't yet. Although I got a mile on one once, a mile one once. Oh, that was not the original. Um, but I see in America the trial for light with electric. So a few guys talking about it. Um, I haven't tried it yet. But it was definitely worth. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we're trolling heavy gear, right? So trolling, if you got like um, TLD20, how many people have got TLDs? TLD20, TLD25 is perfect. Yep. You just got to rip off what you got on there. If you've got 80-pound braid on, put 80-pound braid on. It'll hold 600 metres. Okay. Perfect. And then you need to put on um, about a 100-pound one on leader or 100-pound leader joint with a TT on the road. On the road or whatever you want to put on there. Uh, or put a one on leader, as I said. Um, we're going to go 6 metres of 80-pound leader. The shock at that speed and the hits is quite quite aggressive because you're fishing a very hard drag. If you don't fish your drag up really tight, um, the line just slips off. Okay. Trouble with TLD, TLDs is their drag capacity is not really super 8 pound and that sort of heavy gear, but it will work because it works on mine. I do them all the time. Uh, especially for my kids, that's too heavy for my kids when I do. So I just use the TLD 20s with 65. Uh, Tinos. Tinos are fine too, they're better again. Better again, Tiron's going to be more ballistic, so you can go around the years six, as well. 16 and 20. Yeah, that's fine. That's perfect. But you, you just need 400 metres at least of 8 pound braid. What's the benefit of having a pound braid over 10 50? Uh, because the, 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 it sounds stupid, but the impact you fish in the other drag to the hill. Because uh, otherwise it just rips long, especially if you start using some of these bigger bad boys, um, like this type of thing here, pass this around too. You feel away with it. That's really why they look like that. Um, they're quite heavy, and um, and at that speed, the drag on that's quite aggressive. Yeah, so you need to have your drag right up on the TLD20, pretty well near, near the near over strike and you pull, and you haven't got anywhere to go except for that that way. <laughs> so when the fish hits, it's, um, it'll, it'll rip off another 100 metres, as I said. In no time for the time you slow it down and get him to come back your way before you can actually start biting it. Um, and if you don't have the capacity of the drag to slow it down, it'll just keep going and go after the food. The trouble with Wahoo is that there are a few little 8 to 10, 12 kilo ones out there, but they're generally 20 kilo plus. And get the 9 mile reef um, in late April or May, which is my favorite time to fish down there, um, on the low tide in the morning, the low tide at 7 or 8 o'clock, um, they're up to 30 kilos. Or big gun. Frank Lang got one down there with 40, 40 stuff a kilo. Just a monster. Monster fish. <laughs> and, we'll, and we get them on, on these sort of things too, so we have them on. So far, your darker coloured skirts? Yeah, you? that's a really good question. Um, I, I prefer purples 100%. Purple, purple, black, black, and blue. Uh, those three or four combinations are really good. But there's been days, uh, I, like red, I find reds and browns are really good too, by the way. Uh, but there's been days when I've wanted just pink or, or green. So if I'm running three lures, I'll put them all purple, black, and blue at the back. And if I don't get anything, then I'll switch to a lighter colour. And if it goes that way, then I'll switch around a bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, the, 
Because she's so far to the back, you don't have to worry about the color. They got zoom mile and they got dark, close, light and back. And you don't worry about the head shapes because they're all pointed or jet heads. So you just place them anywhere. You can sort of space them. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Are running the same size lures? Uh, that's a good question too. Uh, the one that's in your pack, the little one, I'll be running that right at the back. Okay? Um, and then your bigger one's in closer. That, that is the same scenario for lighting too. Okay. And remember, the only bike catch is going to be tuna. Okay, but it can be Mac tuna. Mac tuna love 12 knots. And you think of the heat of the water and the light just have to scream off. And then you fight in that fight like a way, it's like, ah, oh, those big 10 or 12 kilo ones. And then, then it starts to do the blah, 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 and then swim around circle and all this But yeah, happy to get shot. Sorry, sorry. Just get my kid out and done But um, yeah, so uh, that's why you need the heavy gear. Yeah, and you need the capacity. Um, but you've got, you got to sell these, don't you? Yeah, I literally just came in two weeks ago. And yeah, that's right. Yes. What, what did you put on the 50 euro? 50 pounds. Yeah, okay. 50's alright, 80's better. <laughs> yeah, 50's alright, 80's better. But you're not suggesting the actual. Yeah. Yeah. So, but you can still get down to 9 miles, right, can't you? Can you tow it down there? Because it's 40k run from here to 9 miles, or 30 k's. It's a bit of a run. Yeah, but it's definitely doable. Is that what do you do, though? Is it, do you launch? No, I'm going to see where down. From the sea where they go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot, it's actually quicker than driving down. Okay. It's not quicker than 20 knots, I've been blown off this. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, generally speaking, it's um, 20, 50 days versus 10 knots, it's quite far quicker. 40 minutes, 45 minutes. Okay. But the trouble is, you've got to please understand when you're trying to 12 knots, you use a lot of fuel. Some boats are really bad, but some boats just don't want to go all that. Yeah, because you're yeah. Yeah. exactly the wrong speed. Yeah, it's a terrible speed. <laughs> and it's like, on most boats, it's around about 3,000 revs, right? Remember how big your boat is, it seems to be around 3 to 3, 4. We all about 3, 6 or 3, 8, we're on plane. And we're doing 20 knots, right? You're only doing like 200 revs less, but you're doing 12 knots, so you're burning a lot of fuel. And, uh, and quite often, years ago, when we skated in Ireland all the time, I did it again, uh, from the seaway, we'd have to go to a tweet bar, the second most we could do to do it, and go to, I uh, still do it, but live it, where the houseboat place is, you can get fuel there. Up and then we go back out again. And because we feel like we can go around here. Yeah, but I'll probably go back there. Uh, but yeah, so um, please remember fuel is, is that I don't know what the jet ski is like on fuel, but you need to probably have a bit extra. Although 12 months, what's that like on ski? Is it probably an sort of thing? No, it's pretty much the same situation, I think. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's the one who's good. He's got to bear with it. As I said, try and trim the boat down a little bit. Big, big mate to stand in front of the boat or something. <laughs> Whatever it takes to get trimmed out. Trim, yeah, trim tabs work well, that's a perfect scenario. Yeah. Okay, so we're trolling these big bad lures around. Now, there are some lures you may have in your arsenal of weapons at home that may be marlin type lures that you can troll uh, for Wahoo. So I'm just going to give you a scenario. Um, that's a cool phantom there, right? Okay, so they are on the Miss Crockett. No, 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 it's Miss Crockett. Right now, phantom. They're about probably, even though it's a bigger head, that's about one third of the weight of that one. Okay? So that one there, once you get up about eight or ten knots, or a bit more, it'll start catapulting. And it'll just get caught up and it becomes a, a disaster. It just doesn't work at high speed. The regular mile will load it at six or seven knots. Um, this one here is very same shape head, um, but um, it's very heavy. So you can troll that at 12 knots. So look at your lures at home, rather than find new ones. And um, I'll just pass both the light and heavy around this bit somewhere. And um, that sort of shape head is fine to use. And that's just a little lure, as long as it's weighted and heavy. So you control that sort of thing. But predominantly, they're, they're pointy shaped, like that type of thing. That makes sense. Like, like sort of bullet nose, right? Or they're the jet heads that are going around before. 
You never get to the point of putting like a sinker or something at the head of the lead yeah, or something to put weight and drag it down? Like, you just make a really good barrel sinker that's not too bad, but you want to put it in a skirt to get it even more pointy and, and less drag. Yep. I think it can um, sometimes get a lot of drag and once it starts to get the speed wobble or whatever, it, then they can't work. Mm, okay. And the carpet wheel, the little sink wheel is going too fast, so they blow over water and the carpet wheels. And that's what you don't want to happen because it gets broken in the lines, which becomes a disaster. Yep. Um, a bit of a smaller scenario here, even something that small as only four, it's fine. Again, it's a feel difference in weight. Or can you put sinkers up inside the... Yeah, you can sinkers up inside, definitely. So, if you had a lure like that that was light, this is the section right here, but it was light, yep. um, you could shove sinkers up behind the heat yeah. and probably crimp them in, hold them in place, yep. and then have the hook at the bottom to sink the hook. Um, so, you can play around what you've got. You've just got to cut, cut the hook. You've got crimpers, so you're doing that in the water for and just recrimp it and put it away. You don't have to take the you know. Does everyone sort of see what I'm trying to get at? You've yep. got to cut the resistance on your lures. You've got to make it look natural. Um, but the first lure is going around that um, purple type one with the, with the metal head. The real big one? Uh, the, yeah, uh, the medium size one, sorry. Yeah, yeah that big one's a real good, good one too. Yeah, that one there, that goes hold up. Thanks a lot, man. Um, that's like my favourite type of wire lure, like 100%. It just creates a massive bubble. It looks big in the water, but it's not big. And they eat it, they eat the whole thing. Um, and it just works really well. Okay. Really good. Um, so we've got a little space there. Um, we've, so we've got three lures out. We've hooked up a wire wheel. I said to you, don't slow down straight away. Do not do that, please. Just gradually pull back. When he starts to slow down a bit, if you slow down, he'll slow down too. Okay. And then he's maybe gone around a bit of a run out that way instead of straight back. That's when you start fighting and you can drop it back to just in fourth gear. Always keep in fourth gear, don't pull back to neutral. In a jet ski, you get like a. No, it gets really difficult. Yeah. You don't like want to swing and turn around. all over the place. Nah, it can be a real good. nightmare here. Yeah. Can you do like one or two knots with the lock on sort of thing? Bit straight. If it you just get turns and then goes over the other line, then yeah, it's pulled up into your impala and then. Yeah, it's hard. Okay. Yeah, that's why I only ever troll two <laughs> lines because it just gets out of control too easy. I can talk to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in that case scenario, you want to get a bit faster and try and fight a bit faster. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so there are all this. Any questions on the skirts at all, folks? Probably get a half on this. Okay. So that's the skirts. Skirts, I believe, are number one for the wahoo. Hard bodies are number two in the trolling scenario. Skirt's always number one. As I said, even, oh, I'm not really that sorry, but yeah, the small one in the bay, it's fine. Up to that real big one down the back there. What about these things that up in the bay? Okay, yeah, really good. Come to the hard bodies now. They're really good, really good. Really good. Um, I'll go to the big style first. So, there are not many big lures you can troll at 12 knots. Most of them will blow out at seven or eight knots. Okay, that's, <laughs> Let's get too, too much speed up, they get a speed wobble and they come out of the water. There are a few that will do it. Um, definitely the new Magrat X-Dragon, that's so lovely there. Okay. It's really good. They're a, um, a lot, they're like a uh, vertical shape. They're not rounded like the other ones. They don't wobble much. They just pull hard. So we're going to use the taller guys. Um, straight downstairs, under about the jump blue shirt is. Oh, but that's this. <laughs> uh, and uh, you control these, I think, up to uh, it was around about 15 knots, 20 knots, I think. I was trolling one of them today. How'd you go? Not very good. Did it <laughs> I was only doing about 8 knots and it was flipping out. Of yeah, okay. so it's the same flip, trouble last time. Out, two things you could be doing wrong. One is running a, a big snap on the problem. You're tying your line directly to yeah. it. You shouldn't do that. I've got I've got a white trace. Okay. Crimped a white trace on it about a meter, and then I've yeah. got the. Has it got a, a not too big clip on the front? It's not too big. Okay. Pretty flat. Let's swap it over. You shouldn't do that. Likewise, you don't want. Oh, so with the hard bodies, you don't run snaps to the. the no, I, you run wire. 
on Wahoo, on Wahoo. Yeah. Like, on mackerel, I was saying, you don't use Wahoo yeah. mackerel. Wahoo is yeah. yeah. good crap. But even with mackerel, so you wouldn't run snaps, you would just tie the, just tie the, with the loop knot, I use the loop knot, same as loop knot, same style. Okay. And, and why do we need? I've, I've had a little six inch wire single strand trace on the front just okay, to bite yeah. trace. So single strand and wire, wire uh, out. it's too heavy, it may yeah. turn to do that. Um, mine is obviously a lot more looser. Uh, I use 49 strand on all of my wire lures because it allows them to be nice. Um, but, yeah, so you go. Why do we want to watch them? What size do I know the... Um, if I, I'm not for wire, but at least in my mode, but I've got the mackerel. Uh, I use, uh, I'm going to say, a uh, uh, lure that size about 60 to 80 pound. Uh, this, yeah, this is a hard choice. Lure yeah. covers with too stiff. It's okay up to about 40 on um, lures, but then it gets a bit stiff. And how much do you put on? Uh, only about half a metre to yeah. a metre. Yeah. What I do my wife, I didn't mention that before, guys, when you bring up your skirts, um, for like a metre max. Okay, so uh, I like to use actually use half a metre, or even shorter. Yeah, that's not Yeah. Are you going on, let's do a wind on trace on? Yeah, about 80 pounds. 80 pounds, yeah, 6 to 80 to 100. Yeah. Like 6 metres of wind on or something? Uh, 3 to 4 minimum, yeah. Just enough to take the shock out, because again, at that speed, you don't rip its jaws out and it hits something that shock out. Uh, this is another lure from uh, Wilson. Uh, these are uh, the Xerix, they say these go up to 30 k's an hour. They're only small lure, uh, I think a little bit smaller for Wahoo, but for Yellow, you know, you control with the skirts, um, it would be perfect. Uh, the other type of lure, oh, this is one here too, this is a Japanese is a good lures, right? Um, this is made by um, Jackson. It has like called planing uh, wings on the bottom of it. And um, I've actually trolled these at 12 knots and they just sit beautifully on the boat. I think they're about a metre, I'll pass it around. I guess it's because they're Japanese, but um, you'll see the little planing wings on the bottom of it and they just hang in, they do not blow. Um, how, how far out do you troll? Yeah, about the 60 metres minimum. So that's about yeah. 80 metres. Yeah. They don't get down that much deeper, the, like rapales that just can't, not that they're shallow repilers, but your stem repilers or that big type thing like that, which is great at eight knots, or maybe ten. Uh, but at that speed, they'll start to blow out. They get down really deep, fast you go to sleep. But once you get going, um, they, they put the revs up, they'll just blow out the top. That's what I want to show you. Um, the other type of lure you can control really fast is the Bibles Minnow, like this type of thing. So Bibles Minnows, um, are really popular for guys that are um, travelling from A to B and on a big rod, like a 50 or 80 pound rod, 50 pound um, And they'll drop those back about 100 to 120 metres. And when you, if you get it, those crappy days, you're going to be like 15 or 20 knots. You throw that at the back. At this time of the year, you have to do it. Like, if you get loose, you got it now. And you're doing under 20 knots, you should have a little bit of a back. That's not the year because there's wire here, there's yellowing, and whatever else. You do the same sort of thing with these little trick baits? Yeah, you will, so we're going to do the same with that too. So they're like a little brother to that one, but they're actually really the size. So the trick baits um, are like a magic lure, so you can actually cast as you can jig it directly. But these fellas here, um, you rig up about 1 0 trebles, okay? Like right? you overuse the 4 mm. or 5 x strong ones. Um, you pull it from the top. Um, I'd put a ring on there, a split ring, with a with a solid ring to the split ring, and tie the solid ring. Okay, that is a snatch of one, and that's that will work really well. So they just sit there and they just do that on the boat. With mono. Uh, with wire. With wire. 100% wire. That's, that's, that's for wire, is it? That's for wire. Yeah. You get the elephant in there too. Um, you also get mackerel, child the slower of Um I don't have a little scratch mark for more than about 10 knots. Because that's extremely fast. Um, but yeah, so they're really good as well. Um, that's probably about it in the trolling lures. Oh, this big bad wood. So, we get, there's, a, there's a bigger version of that version. So, if you do have if the luck of having a, an 80 pound combo, um, that's 
that works really well at 20 knots. It's hanging there, as soon as the alarm works out, and um, it gets mangled. Uh, running about probably six to seven O trebles off it, or a couple of big eleven O singles. Pretty good no singles. Derek, you worked for you. Sorry? Derek? Yeah, you Derek. For you? Yes. He gave me a little similar to that yes. probably 20 years ago. Oh, serious? A product yeah, called Tina Tuna. Oh, Tina Tuna, yeah, yeah, very good. Yeah. Yeah, they're very good. Yeah. They're very good. <laughs> <laughs> they have a lot of good lures they put in there. Yeah, very good. Nice looking lures. I wish I saw a lot of them. But a lot of guys use big lures. Um, I've got one of our customers. He trolls this, actually, this one here. Um, if you troll Kevin's his name. And uh, every time he goes out now, he does a lot of deep dropping in like 300 metres. So as soon as he gets out the seaway, he throws these out the back and he sits on 20 minutes. Every trip he's got at least one big wildlife. And a lot of times it's not very far out. A lot of times it's far out, but uh, it's all over the trip. What's that color? Oh, that style. That, that color's good. That color's good. But anything in that pointy nose type thing is really good. Actually, the ones in your bag, you got one on one of those. Um, yeah, it's kind of size. I think I've read it about 22. Yeah, it's the same size that, yeah. 22. 22. Uh, 22. Uh, 22. Uh, 22. Uh, 22. Uh, 22. Uh, 22. But he's using a um, Okay, so that's the sort of laws we're using for Wahoo. Um, as I said, um, with the Wahoo this year, they've been exceptionally really good in close. They're not normally that good in close, as I said. This year's been incredible up till last week. They will be there, I think, once the water clears up again. Um, and, and there's been a lot more Wahoo than normal. So we don't want to see Wahoo until late April, May. Uh, but this year they're in close to the and typically nine mile reef down to it is, but this year they're, they're here since January, so they've just been, and everyone's known in you know. Um, and the average size has been around that sort of 12 to 14 kilos or 16 kilos, with the odd 20 amongst them. So not bad size fish are in close. And um, they're just a really good fish to catch. If you look at on 15 kilo mono as well, if you got 15 kilo mono, if you're predominantly chasing that sub, 15 kilo fish, that's fine. But the 20 kilo plus one would be a bit of curry. I'll put a uh, 23 kilo on it. It'll be for the big ones. It's fine, perfect. Yeah, that'll take up to. You know, sure. It's funny, mono is a little different to, to braid, so one of the only times I really like the mono trolling is for Wahoo. Uh, but braids, I use braid as a set of skin gear as well. Um, but Generally speaking, uh, 50 pound mono is the Wahoo get to the boat line. Uh, but you don't have to um, go that way. It's, it's big and chunky, the outfit's it's big and chunky to get the capacity. So that's the problem you've got. Okay, um, so casting lures of Wahoo. So if you happen to be like my friend Johnny that um, found the floating things out, out of the sea there, Drifting along, obviously there'll be dolphin fish there, we all know that. Uh, but often with the dolphin fish, it's the wahoo, and there'll be male, and there'll be uh, sharks as well. Uh, but you need to cast something or troll something past to see what species that, that are there. And um, definitely, if you've got a spin outfit with you, uh, make sure it's around about 50 pound braid when you get out of that situation. Because uh, again, the fish are like 20 kilos sometimes. Um, and the stick bait size we're casting are going to be, or you can cast that too, by the way. You can cast them as well. Um, but the stick bait size is going to be around that sort of size. Which is, it's What weight is that? Uh, uh, they're about 40 grams. 40. 40. Uh, the, I think these are the Maria loaded, which are really popular stick bait. They're a little bit heavier, I think they're around 50 grams. I think it's. Sorry, don't last enough. Uh, 55, sorry. 55 grams. So, on most 50 pound braids, you better cast that around 6 to 8 inches. Yeah. So, sorry. Yeah. So, um, small stick baits, and this is the same application um, when, you, when you're at rest or um, if you happen to have some guys got a um, one on his rod, you put the one on the skirt, 
and you're whining a little bit, the cleaves are lower rollers, and you see one or two of his mates following, you should always have the rod rigged up, whether it be with a metal spinner or something like that, at this time of year. Even in clothes, same scenario, you get the spoilies on, the Spanish on, and you see his mate coming, you should definitely cast out the SD equator that little straight away and get a double hook up. The chances are probably more than 50% you get hooked it up, his mate up. Because he wants to know what's going on too. His fish might look different to the other guys who so want to try it. Um, the biggest size I'd probably use around here, so not North Reef, similar as well, but probably around that sort of size. So that's why I'm doing one. Thanks. Um, but they're about sort of 80 to 100 grams, so a bit more weight to them. And you can cast those depending on around 50 pound a day. You can braid. Like even a little short rock like that, that's when you got the bow. Uh, like that smaller lure coming around, I reckon I could easily cast that 50 gram or 40 gram lure probably around 50 metres with that. And the bigger one maybe 60 or 80. Because when you see a fish, you give it your best to get it. <laughs> <laughs> you find that extra just cast it straight. Uh, yeah, so you make anything work. Okay? Improvise. Can you just wind it straight and just work it? Yeah. You see guys, um, I, I know, um, with, I've done a bit of up in the reef there fishing and uh, in the like the Pacific and sometimes if they're really thick you don't need to do anything, just wind it. You don't need any action, just pop them up. It'll even stick back, you try and work it like this, but when they're thick you just wind it. And the version of the carp wheels so will still smash it. Um, when they're a little bit uh, finicky, um, sometimes like the popping and gelling will do the up action like so, the blue bit, but with a stick back, it's not just like that, and we'll just do that through the water so you guys get a lot. Um, but in the scenario of, because most stick baits are sinking folks, they're not floating, uh, except for some of the Japanese ones, the timber ones are float as well. Um, but you can let it sink down, if, you're, if you find something floating, a big log, wherever it might be, and you see a little glistening of fish around it, let it sink down, because a bigger Fish are down low, down there. You don't see them much on the top, you see the little ones around it, because we got a big bad boys down deeper. So you need to let it sink down, sink down, sink down, and work it back. It's, it will come up to the top if you have got like a surface top one as well. Um, but particularly with the jig, get it down there, like the gentleman said down the back there. Get your jig down to micro jig, any type of um, structure that's floating. Very good. So the fads too, you don't jig the fads, you don't have to jig the fads. Very good. So when, the, when, the, when you get like 20 boats around and everyone's drifting past, they have lives open, the old guys pull the fish, the only small ones generally do it. Silly little fish. The big ones are just there, but they're down further. So if you micro jig, drop down about 50 metres and work it back up, you'll catch still dolphin fish with your big ones. Sometimes they'll just scatter away from the fads, but they'll generally stay on that. A lot of people don't realise too, that float might hold fish, but that's not the fad. The fad's actually down to the rope, facing generally north, probably about 100 metres in front of the float. Mm -hmm. That's where the fish are. They're not at the float itself. The little ones are, but they're the silly little ones that are easy to catch. <laughs> so you need to get those big bad boys in deep. So um, if you've got sinking lures or sinking stick baits or uh, micro jigs, so whoever you go to the boat at the time, try to work yourself down deep and then back up through the, through the fish. Um, poppers, you can cast poppers at um, Wahoo as well, but they need to be not the blooping Trevally style. They will take it obviously if they're hungry, but um, more the the old 70s, 80s poppers that they just wind like a bad out of hell and skip them and go over the joint, like this type of thing. Badass type popper. So it's the cool badass F A T R possibly yes. And um, that type of thing just works really well on uh, uh, all species actually, but but we're trying to mark here too. And the entry. The other thing, we'll take those out wide. Um, can you put it in the, in the popper stick bait? Any questions on popper stick baits at all? Okay. And, um, what about time of day for those? I see a lot of videos yeah. that try to get a crack of dawn. Yeah, that's right. So um, the fish are always up, up high in the crack of dawn. Same so that's why the 24 fish is best. Right on daylight. Then once you get those five boats there, 
they're sort of dodging the drops. Yeah. And once you get to 40 votes out there by 7 o'clock, they've just gone down. Yeah. And you'll see them on the sound, you'll see them, they're up <coughs> like 10 metres down at daylight. And then by about 6 37, they're like 20 metres down. Yeah. You see the bunches are down lower on the line. So, so um, the fish, I think, uh, are pushed down by the by the boat traffic. They're still there. And they'll still buy it, used to be nice down there. Um, so you can try to run cheating, you can try to get through it. Uh, but the one who in that, um, if you've got structure, they're, they're there all the time. If you've got no structure and, and you just come across a school, I don't know they or you see a bait school, there's bees in the bait school. Um, I would think, yeah, before the boat, it's always before the boat's there, like first thing in the morning. I don't know where you are. You know. with, the, uh, with the gene, do they prefer slow or fast? Uh, so that's depending, you've got to try the different techniques. So fortunately part of flutter top jigs, so you're going to use, I'm going to put it one, um, these are like a long top jig, with a slight bit of flutter to it, use two slow flutter to see if they'll like, shoot it off. Yeah. So um, you switch your hooks to um, metal assist hooks, like this type of thing here. Has so anyone jigged the spot, spotted or Spanish mackerel you ever look? There you go. Man. You get nipped heat, you just get yeah. nipped in near like probably 80%. <coughs> On the hook or on the whole lure? Just, just go on, don't even know. Just do, do, boom, boom, go on. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> 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 no, it's like just a cheese. That's true. Um, that's what I said, Cathy's a flutter stall. So a flutter stall is too slow falling, and it's like when you cast in these metals at spotties, um, this type of thing here. Like I, I know my best kids can be, but just can give it two or three seconds of fall and then work it back. But it wants straight away across the top all the time, I'm going crazy. And you don't get the hook at right, but if you sink a little bit, you get the bite. But the problem is, they'll, they'll bite it off all the time, too. Same deal with the flutter jig, so you're going to get a better bite ratio, but they bite it off because it's just sitting in the water, just free fall, and it's coming kind of different, like I said. Uh, with this type of jig here, it's like a straight type of jig, uh, they, will, they can still bite them off, don't get me wrong, but it falls pretty lot quicker. So the hook up, the bite rate of them biting a line is a, a lot better. A lot less for them. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a lot better for the uh, for the fishermen. So um, with Mac, and I think I believe that uh, definitely mackerel are who like something that's quite mm. aggressive and quite fast, but the king yeah. So they like something that's uh, more more fast type action. So if you do want to do any of the jigging, talk about go to your longer skinny type jigs yeah. um, and put the metal assist time. Have you seen metal assist at all? I'll pass this around. What sort of weight jigs would you uh, I read about, um, depends on the depth that you're fishing, but generally they're, they're sub 50 metres, uh, 50 metres in height to the surface. So you only need uh, 130 gram max. You've got a bit of current, and so you're down braid. If you're using 50 gram braid, 130 gram braid, probably 60. It's all relative to the braid and the wind and the current and the drift is that you're copying at the time. So everything's got to be at that right angle, and the right action. If it's too far at the back, it's not going to work. If it's too straight down, it's too heavy, it's not going to work. It was going to be loaded up too much. So you need to get that the right balance. Bit off topic, but will mm. snapper hit those hooks? They don't. Uh, um, I've never tried, to be honest, I've never tried. Um, but I would think they don't care. Yeah. They're, they're going off the jig. Yeah. And they're the jig. Yeah. Do you guys want another water at all? It'll be water. I don't think yeah. there's enough water being consumed, do we? Oh, okay. Imagine if there's alcohol over here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's all right. Um, so, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, um, get back to the jig side of things. Longer skin your jigs, not butter style. Um, and you can put a little bite trace on your white jig. Again, they're going for the jig, they're not, going, they're not looking to survive it. They're just focusing on eating that jig, as you said. And if you run a little bit of wire above it, I'd probably run 49 strand. Again, the action of the jig's going to be a lot better. Stiff wire makes it, it's easier to do, quick to do, no white twist, but it's not as um, uh, natural looking for the fish. And the, the unfortunate part is single strand wires are hard to bite through, so you can get a lot thinner. But it's no point having thin stuff if, if the action's not very good in the lure. So we're sacrificing that with the tip of wire. 
Only nine strand wire is thinner though. So if you've got 135 pound seven strand wire and 135 pound 49 strand wire, it's about half of the inches. Just remember that. But 49 strand wire is more expensive, but super subtle with tokens if you do Okay, um, just, I just was about to go to wire traces right now, actually that's the next thing on here. So with wire traces, there are wire traces you can buy made up. Um, Helco do a, a good one at the moment, it is single strand, um, and it's quite compact, so I'll pass this around too. So it's 58 pound, but you can see that the accessories as in the snap and the um, swivel are quite petite, compared to the one you'd normally pick for that size. So it's not a bad thing because it's actually you've got protection and um, this for Wahoo maybe. If you don't want to rig up your lures yourself uh, or your hard bodies, you don't want to run wire, then you can try this. Uh, but I only like six strand wire on slow drop baits. It's only time I like it. Turn the money. Um, there are other type things. It's like a standard help go a little optia type eight pound sort of traces that oh, it's funny, you know, I touched on my customers, once you get north of Bundaberg, the fish are uneducated, they don't care, they don't care about why, they don't care about how thick your monos or your whatever, they don't give a crap. They they just eat get down the Sunshine Coast, they get a bit more educated, get down the Gold Coast, they're probably A class students. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but and you give them a, a cheap like you know, like a Smith's tube, one of those like this is Barrow spoon spoons. Again, you can troll off from here to Bundy and get nothing. And then you get Bundy Burger, they just jump all over it. I don't know, I don't know what it is. <laughs> and um I, it's just the, the way it is down here. Maybe we taught them to be educated, I don't know. Um they're definitely different fish. So you need to be very specific about what you do in fishing and get it right. But if you go up to, um, say, the other beach, so I'm just going to chuck a little bit back with your uh, rope. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> they, just, they just use big airlines of rope. And a, a piece of bloody shop board that's about like a D9 bloody truck or whatever, a big truck, smack truck or whatever. Um, you need one of these boats, I do, you two. Have a dime. Okay? They, you'll know how a boat whose mouth is like articulated. The same thing has a mouth on it. You need to catch one to see it. That's <laughs> no, I guess it wouldn't fit in the S because it's not just set up through an extra way. So you can get a look at its mouth. Okay, so the mouth, um, most fish, the bone is joined to the teeth, right? The head's all one piece. Why have we got this little pivot thing in the front like a, a snake mouth? Buttery guy, yeah, like it's, it's weird. And they can bite, they can like roll like that too. So they're very different to your normal fish. So. When they bite, it's a different type of uh, bite. It's a very aggressive bite, and that's why the teeth are very different from most other species. So, like, um, mackerel have good teeth, they're very sharp and they're very, uh, very good to cut wire. Wire who are just incredible. So, you could be using 250 pounds, but actually, the wire that we use on our rig set says for wire who specifically is 250 pounds. And they will just cut it without any single rod move. You'll, you'll just be trolling along. And you'll have your rod maybe bent on say the top rod about there, and then you look at it just like that, and it's gone. You didn't see it happen. You didn't see anything like that. I've had that happen. Had that happen? Yeah. yeah. Trolling. They're just exceptional to cut off anything. Trolling uh, hard bodies for mackerel, and one rod ran, and then it was gone, and then the other one was just flapping in the roots. That's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. I, I had the same thing happen a yeah. couple of weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. Nine pound trace. Nine pound trace, So I, I only normally lose a couple of lures a, a season. I haven't done, I've been at home a dozen times chasing my this year and got a few, but I've lost five lures. I've never lost five lures in a year in my life. But there, I think three or four of those are wide. Yeah. A lot of wide lures this year, so I'm not, I wasn't prepared for them. So I wasn't using wide at the start. Okay, so um, we've got that down pat. There is one other thing I want to show you. Um, I'll probably do a couple of things, but this is um, a really good one you can add to even that, and the mackerel wouldn't deter it, I don't think. So this is titanium. Okay. Um, titanium is exceptionally thin, it's very pliable, it's about tight, not so much, it's back out here, it's natural. 
Um, and the running a few CDSs a little uh, stainless steel stools we got, but they're super strong. They're like um, they're like size ten to like forty kilo. So they run really small gear on there, but it's exceptionally strong. Um, so something like that you can get away with trolling on just about every type of lure you've got or casting the type of lure you've got. And I don't think it would make a big difference to the fishing, the fish biting aspect of your, your uh, fishing on the day. Because they're very compact. Um, and just a show of hands, how many people who troll with braid at the moment? And mono? Both. 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 <laughs> so you like me, I do half and half too. Yeah. I'm having trouble with my mono, it twists a lot. Yeah, okay, so um, run ball bearing swivels, you probably are, maybe, I don't know. Um, but you go there, like, we all watch our lures for a bit, we're so excited, with, and then half an hour later, it's not happening. And it starts to look to your mate. <laughs> yeah. And in the meantime, you're just, we all know the shift's been really bad, you put weed out there, right? And you get weed on your lure, and then it starts spinning. And you don't actually see it, but sometimes it's down below his feet. And, uh, and then when you wind it in, or your line just gets all, does like a zone of a twist. Um, that's yeah, from the weed, not down the Do you have weed on your line when you pull it in? No, no, um, no, that's what I was surprised. Just yeah, with hard yeah. bodies, yeah. like they're okay. just on the Talika, there it is. And yeah, the Talika is It's the only one. Yeah, so. I don't know whether they put it on wrong when I purchased it, or this is fair well, like that. But yeah, it just twists up really bad. I just want to get rid of it, actually. Yeah. Well, Every time. Once you've got twists really bad in the line, you can't do it. You can, like you say, say, put a bucket at the back and the spin around the other way. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. So um, you can drop your line at the back with nothing on it, and it may get a bit better, but it will never, the memory's already gone. Yeah, no, So you've got to cut it and replace it. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> Not really, but anyhow. <laughs> 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 no, um, it, no, it happens to me all the time too, mate. Typically, we eat a problem. Uh, or sometimes you just uh, might get the other line, it, it'll swim across the pattern for some reason, and then they both get twisted up, and it's just a pain. It's only that yeah. one reel, like, yeah, okay. I don't know why. Oh, okay, yeah, it's definitely not the reel. Yeah, all right. Did we get, get it from here, though? Pardon? Did you put the line from here? No. There's a problem. <laughs> no, no, no. We put up the machine downstairs, but we put it on, and like, I had to say that old mate over here probably does most of the white line winding in the shop because he gets thrown every day. But Jake is good. But um, I would probably say um, they haven't wound up tight enough, or perhaps they held the spoolers when they come up this way. It wasn't well mm -hmm. straight. There could be many reasons for it. but. If you want it on the top from the start, it's already, I'm not saying it's pretty stretched, but it's, it works better. If you want it really loose, you get drums. It's, yeah, it's beyond frustrating now. Yeah, okay, you can replace it, yeah. Um, so, just, get, just to uh, go back to what we said, so if, if you're using braid uh, for the, for the yellow pin, 30 pounds mm -hmm. fine, 20 pounds fine, okay? Mm -hmm. For casting, controlling, mm -hmm. 30 pounds minimum, mm -hmm. 4 pounds okay. <laughs> Okay, we're talking yellow at 20 kilos. Um, if you, uh, and all they do is they fight, they'll scream off on your, on your spur that control them, um, or they'll scream off on your, on your hard body, whatever. Uh, then they'll just do the spirals around, 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 and the little tails down this, which tells the tunes straight away, they'll do a little feel. And then uh, you've got them, as simple as that. Um, gapping them, they're pretty good, they'll run a little bit and they'll come back, but just gap shot is always safe, just grab your leader and come up. Find it in the head section straight to the boat. Okay. Um, when you're chasing um, the wahoo now, you need to have a really, to get a chance of seeing those bigger ones, and if you do start to use like the purple size or bigger um, lure, although those little ones will still have 20, 20 kilo pitch, um, you need to be trolling at least 50 pound braid or 30 pound mono. If you're going to the next size, bit bigger lure, as in this sort of size thing, you really need to be trolling about um, uh, probably um, yeah, 50 pound mono, 80 pound braid, 65 pound. So Gareth will still get fish on 50, but you just can't troll that size of the one. Probably don't want to <laughs> But, because um, uh, it's just too heavy and too much shot. Yeah. 
but 50 pounds are right uh, for a general, general one trying to do it, um, but 80 pounds better. And good sharp gap, always check the gap. The only you've got, um, with the wire hoop, when you do get it in, you've got the two hooks on, just please um, try and, if you've got two hooks and both hooks are in the mouth, Try and get the top one out first because the bottom one's one always flips around. If you get the bottom one out first and you try and you work on the next one, the bottom one's always flicking around. The top one doesn't flick around as bad. So you please remember that. And uh, that's an old fish, by the way. Are there any good ideas for tea hookers? Yeah, tea hookers, I have. Um, we just got, I was trying this one out at the moment, I actually uh, didn't have it here. So it sounds good at home. Uh, it's a new sample, I got it screws into. Any tag pole or any of those poles that have got that gap type bit of the screw in the end. Um, and so it's shaped um, by memory like um, it's, it's got the thread down here, it comes up and it's got um, that type of end on it. Um, so this one here you can um, pull on, uh, push on the hook, this one here you pull on the hook. Does that make sense? Yeah. Using the pole. Um, and if you run a short pole, obviously you can get out of the mail or whatever. But for toothy critters, um, that is literally about that size. Mm. So it's quite long. So you're away from the hooks and it's safe. Yeah. But I just want to try it out first before I put it in the shelf. Um, but it's good easy to pick the screw to most of your fittings. Yeah. And he's probably going to bring it out in a on pole or fix. Okay. But the stage is done. It's a local product, stainless yeah. steel, nice product. Probably about, uh, it's quite thick too, around about three and a half, four mil thick, mm -hmm. strong enough. Yeah. Um, the cooler made real good to cool too, stainless steel one, same scenario yeah, as actually same great. Don't have a point in the bottom. It's uh, very hard, it doesn't really. Yeah. yeah we sell a lot of those, Jake, didn't we? <laughs> uh, can't get them anymore. Uh, so anyhow, keep your hands very clear of the hooks. Make sure your hooks are sharp. Um, if you're using lures, Check your trebles. Most trebles will hold out, but you've got to remember, if you're trolling some of these bigger lures and trolling at 12 knots, and your hooks are just like standard uh, BMC style, they will bend a bit, okay? They will bend. And if you get a big fish on and you get your pliers in there, and get the treble out, generally you'll bend it. You bend it back, it's already destroyed its full strength. Then that next fish will just pop it open and you'll lose it. So get yourself, I was get I call them small fish or one fish. Most of those hooks, hooks they are. So if you uh, predominantly want to go and just get a few fish and and, and really give the um, fish a hard time, you need to put on like four or five strength hooks. Get get Japanese steel ones, like Shinto's or BMC, uh, BMC uh, uh, owners or uh, BKK um, or Nomad. They're all good ones. Uh, they're all made by the same company and uh, the Japanese steel. So they're very hard to bend and then put the pliers on it and pull it out of the fish's mouth and actually rip the fish's mouth and won't bend the little compared to the Chinese steel. Because like I said before, you're burning 100 litres of fuel oil for the day or more. It's petty to rob on what could be destroy your day. Hooks <laughs> aren't too expensive. Uh, um, what else is there to talk about? I was going to talk about, for the, those of you who, there is another lure, you know like, um, all types of lures, a shallow diving lure trolls the bastards, did you guys know that? The deep diving lure trolls the slobs. It's down deeper so, but it blows the play out of the water a lot quicker. So that Japanese one that's going around has got a very small bib on it, you've seen that. So a lot of other lures have small bibs on it, like, um, Lace pros and the shallow one. Uh, they troll the fastest out for lace pros. Not the, not, the, not the deepest, but they troll the fastest. And um, bombers, uh, 17 A's and things like that, that have a shallow bib. Um, you can also hook them up behind a paravane, like that type of thing, or a plane board. Okay? So these guys will get you a little down 40 feet, and you can troll it at still 10 knots or 12 knots. And when you hook the fish up, um, and the, the, this ring pulls to the other end of here, it flips around and you don't even know it's in the line and you're fighting the fish. The plane, the, the depth thing that stops working, just comes to the top and you, you play the fish in. Um, it allows you to line you down a lot 
deeper. They do work better slow, but I hope we use them fast, but only with that type of little on the back loop. It's a little bit um, intricate, but um, I'll pass it around to you and look at the back loop even better. But uh, quite a good idea to get some of the uh, other little going faster and then deeper. I was going to pass one to do this a little bit around, I'll pass it around. These are actually really good. One question I thought someone would ask, treble versus single hooks. How many guys here um, have a preference single hooks? Okay. I'm catching up. Fish tonight. I was going to say that. Okay. So, and, mate, do you find um, the single hooks um, a uh, better hookup rate for you on tre yeah. these trebles? Yeah, because it, like for bigger fish, it's better for single hook. Yeah. Because treble can pull out. Yes. I like can do some angle and just come out easy. Hop, yeah, they can leverage one side yeah. against the other. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but single hooks, you must kick away from the fish the whole yeah. time. If you drop it, they can fall out too. Yeah. But uh, you can allow your lure to go faster and work better with single hooks, okay? Um, I'm still a treble guy, <laughs> um, but, uh, but a good treble, not a cheap treble. Uh, well, not so much a cheap treble, cheap made treble, I should say, not that it's different from price. Um, but uh, singles versus treble is a very important aspect. Some lures you'll find most of the faster lures, like those Rapalas going around. Well, they're strange with these ones, have trebles on, but uh, they generally have singles on them. So most of your fast lures have single hooks, and most of your slow lures have trebles on them. Why do those stick baits have a lot of singles? Yeah, again, the action, the action's better. Yeah. Um, but I remember the first time I had my worst scenario with singles was with the BG cast the GTs. Okay. We lost every fish we caught on the single hooks, and the guy wouldn't fish trebles because the vision for damaging uh, uh, points. Yeah. He wouldn't get damaging points. Yeah. <laughs> And then I like these trebles. Oh. So that's the decay fishing world. Yeah. Uh, and I hated it. I hated it. So um, I went back there without him and yeah. used trebles and caught nearly every fish was like 90%. Yeah, I'd be right. So, um, but that was just the way I was fishing, mate. I don't know. But I um, had bad luck on single hooks. Mate, I don't know. He does a lot of single hooks. So <laughs> I think it's personal. But um, they come out because the action's better. And you, if you're a good fisherman, you can come on a bad fisherman. Keep the weight on it better. Yeah, if they won't fall out, they're good. Yeah. But definitely makes the lure perform better. Yeah. Yeah. And dragging two lots of duck behind you is not going to give the same action. Yeah. Especially stick baits, they need to go on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I think I've got everything pretty well covered. Is there any questions at all? Anything you guys want to know about, about that sort of fishing? Just what you come here tonight, one to know. When you're trawling, um, yes. can you mix, like, can you troll hard bodies and skirts? Or um, you... In the, in the Wahoo, I uh, taught me how yeah. they're in that fast, high speed right. style. Yeah. So you troll vehicles with skirts? Yeah. 100%. And like, yeah. but in those high speed lures that are up to 12, like, if you troll never 12 knots, you can throw a skirt in that skirt as well. Yeah. Yeah. And always in that scenario, if you troll, say, four lures, you'd have two hard bodies in close up. Yeah. And the skirts out further. Yeah. Because the hard bodies are still going to be down a little bit. And you don't want to get into your lines at the back. Yeah. yeah. And that's just, don't be shy to ask. Doug, have you ever got into the slow troll, like big bonito baits and stuff? Yeah, like super slow, like uh, big, big baits? You know, for Wahoo, um, I find they still bite better if you troll high speed skirt or lures. There's just nothing beats it. Um, we troll baits in Wahoo, but Wahoo are very good at chopping baits. That's, I've had a few times yeah. out here on a big bonito, yeah. like four, four from here, yeah. and then it gets straight in half. Like you've got yeah, a treble right there, and, the yeah. and they just pass it. Don't hook up. Straight yeah, through. You don't even feel the bite. It's that big, because yeah. <laughs> I've got a bit of a weird feeling of the beaks. But it's quite a strange thing, because they are very good at just slipping things with that mouth that it is. And um, it's, uh, it can't get that by any other fish. No fish will do that. Like I said, mackerel got sharp teeth and they will bite, but that's them biting like that, you know? Well, who's a different type of species? And uh, I don't know if any other fish has got that sort of mouth, but um, 
it makes a lot of work to rig them up, as you know, they're expensive too. Yeah. It was expensive. Too. You're not travelling as much ground, I suppose, as well. Yeah, you're not travelling as much ground as well, so you need another fish there for a start. Um, but it, they definitely do work, they get bites 100%. Uh, but I'd rather troll uh, skirts. Yeah. Have you trolled skirts for one year? No, just try it. Yeah. 12 months. Yeah. yeah. I've just put outriggers on again. Able to troll that, that speed using outriggers, or probably not? No. No, I'm not. And um, uh, with our readers, uh, very good uh, eight knots, up to about eight knots. Yeah. Like, guys do troll, like we have done for yellowfin and, and over the years in heavy tackle, and caught wire who was bycatch. Um, I trolled for blue marlin when I got to eight and maybe ten down, down the swell on the on the outriggers. But it's very hard to hold the band at that speed. Mm -hmm. They tend to, even like these size like forties or they pop off. So, 32s or whatever. Well, so, you just gave it to us. That's what I was doing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I would suggest um, just put the lures at back. At that speed, too, um, as I said, you, you pace them 20 metres apart, and about, it's enough to do any time and turn without sort of getting caught up. And how far out is your longest one? Uh, about 120, 140 metres. Oh. Yeah. Okay. But it's been doing like 12, 14 knots. Yeah. 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 Um, it is a play, it, like the normal reef is scary because you've got a lot of boats there, and sometimes when the boat we're on, there's like sometimes 20 boats like at here, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and you've got um, guys out there um, spear fishing too. Yeah. They, they, drop, they drop off the top of the reef and they drift along with their bottles and spear it, and then they might get them and pull them up, you know? And uh, so you got them in the way too. When you go 12 knots, you don't have much time to, you got to be really aware of what you're doing. So you're really in the one boat, you the line, so you hear it, but you hear it take off and hit the lure. Um, and one boat driving, keep an eye on everything, because that's speed, you can have accidents. Yeah. Yeah. When you have slots, you have plenty of time to divert. <laughs> um, on that, to get back to the other photo I sent out too, you'll see there's a yellow line by memory and a red line on the bit of the map of the nine mile reef. Which oh, that's nine mile, was that's that's the nine mile reef, yeah. So my troll runs, I do the yellow run first, you see it's like double up, I go back down to so number seven. Uh, you've got to get yourself down and give it a shot, but you need New South Wales to license, okay? And it's 75 bucks for three years, and, and well worth it, because it was really quite good, just to see it. Doesn't the New South Wales fishing zone come right up to Burley, nearly? It does, out further. I think it runs at 28 degrees or something uh, from the mouth of the uh, Sample Rocks or something. Charlie, you're saying you've got to have a fishing licence to go to the Nine Mile? New South Wales licence, you do. Well, okay. Yeah. Don't get cool. I guess I'm not going there <laughs> Sunday then. <laughs> you can get a day licence. You get online, stuff on to even online. Oh, okay. Coast Watch is good. Trying to Coast Watch go to New South Wales fisheries. You can just get it, on, you can get it online. They give you a number straight away. Yeah. And then they send the little okay. license out to you. Little card. Little blue card. Oh, okay. Yeah. And um, the last, well, I've got three years on a second five runs. Yeah. And they're very good. They're sitting there. information. They're better than Queensland Fisheries. Just okay. sending out a lot. They're just okay. blue card. They send you. And you get pamphlets all the time and updates. And it's very yeah. good. It's very good. So, question I have cleaning tables there too. Did have was in the stuff you've sent out. Mm -hmm. There's screenshots on your phone or whatever. There's two there that I weren't meant to go. If they're the ones you're talking about. Oh no, I'm, talk <laughs> I'm talking about all of them. No, they're not a good mark. <laughs> <laughs> the shot will actually have a good mark. I didn't actually send it to myself. <laughs> it's got a picture of like a. That's where white city goes. A cursor on it. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, I saw them. Yeah. Yeah, those ones aren't meant to be. Um, but otherwise, the mark we're looking for is just whatever's got on the top. That's the mark. Yeah, so when you click on the picture, it'll have a picture of the fish. Click open it up and click it one more time, it reveals the GPS mark at the top. At the top, that's what we're yeah. after, yeah. yeah. That's, that's what I assume. So, it, when you put all those marks into your GPS, it, they're a north to south run, okay? And and in between other marks, those sort of work down to, okay? So, some of the runs will start right up. Like the 50 metre line, I start where they got Flatty Rock, which is uh, just north of the sea road, right, about 52 metres deep. A lot of marlin there at times, too. And I'll put you in there, my boot. And I start there and I'll work my way down to about 
on a day, if I do a day trial, it gives me the trial that I've got early heads, even Kira, and then I'll, um, I'll sometimes trial back and fix the current, or see if she needs the current, or I'll um, just sort of do something else. But it's about um, at 12 knots, but for, for, yeah, for Wahoo speed at 12 knots, it's pretty, it's around about probably um, uh, our bit trial that's pretty fast. So you cover a lot of ground. Yeah, so, um, and the nine mile one, which is, I get it before, it's a yellow one. Um, I start my run at the southeast corner, that's where it drops right off. It's like a washing machine there. It just drops from like eight meters straight down to 45 meters. And that's on the southern end. I start my run there, I go a little bit out for about maybe 50 meters. And I try and stick in, in the old days, 80 feet, which is about 25 meters. And I keep on that depth all the way up to get to the top part of it. And then I'll dog leg west. And the front part is where you get a lot of fish because the currents are running south here. I don't know if you guys know, but all the fish sit at the front of the reef in the current. Golden rule for most fish. You get the bait sits on the back side of it sometimes. Sometimes the bait's the front and back. So that's why the bottom corner works really well at times, don't it? Uh, but the front is quite <coughs> wide on the nine miles. The, the widest part is at the, at the northern end of it. It's about five and a half metres across. So you do a big run on the front of it, keeping it about that 60, 80 feet. Once you get to about 40, 50 feet, you die up on the reef. You need to keep on the edge of it. That's where the fish are. And go all the way in, and do a U, and go back out where everybody just went down, come back down over the same one, do a little bit of a dog leg to the south, and about two caves. Dog leg to the um, south in about 300 meters or whatever, and then do a UE and do the same again. The red run um, is right on the edge in about 40 to 50 foot of water, that's when you, and it comes up to about 25. That's when you've got to be careful. That's the one that, um, when the swell's about two meters, it, it'll be going along, and then all of a sudden you look to your, if I'm going north, I look to that size. You can always see the rock. And the big swells are sucked up, he's got to plant it and get out of there real quick because we get dumped. Okay. Jet ski is a little bit more power, you guys want to get up it. In the boat, you, you really do a 12 months we get for it. See, but you get good strikes in there, but it's a penalty that tries to pay. So, am I right in understanding you, you're mostly told you're effectively trolling the edge of the. Trolling the edge of the edge, that's pretty well correct. And, but we cast. We start at the top end and we drip all the way down and cast in the stick baits and the poppers. Yeah, the mainly stick baits. With those two trawl lines, the red line, and then you've got the three marks after it, are they the marks? Yeah, so um, the three marks are like there's general marks on the nine mile that we'll probably cast the marks I put on there. We'll cast that. Yeah. Um, but you'll get the gist of it when you. When you sound around the place, you'll see how it drops off and how it sort of runs. And on that picture, it actually shows that the reef running northwest as you head north, but that's not the case. It actually runs northeast. Yeah, that one. So that's it. We're sticking that 80 foot for 26 meters all the way up. And then um, till um, we get, we don't know the mark is at the northern end of it, then we'll leave that one. But definitely trying to get back size down and have a fish over this next two months. Get big GTs down there too. So, so. What about trolling just for dolphin fish? Yeah, so dolphin fish, um, well, like I said about the fans at the moment are back on fire again. They were before their own, uh, two Fridays ago. Um, if you're going to troll there, those smaller skirts, the one you've got the bag there, troll those around at uh, about six to eight knots. Um, not wahoo speed this long. Uh, dolphin fish will hit up to about 10 knots, but they're like, they're like, like marlin on the mackerel speed, 6 to 8 knots. And um, so, do you know where the pads are at the front here? How big is your boat, mate? Well, it's a 760. I have to get plenty, okay, you're right. <laughs> so, uh, it's just go to the pads at the front, it's called pad 12 and 12B and 12C. But 12 C's moved downtown a bit, I think. Yeah, there's a new one down south. Yeah, well, it's actually, I think it's actually C's moved down. Oh, okay. About two guys. Sorry? Point Lookout. Oh, Point Lookout, very good. So Point Lookout, bad. Um, when the current's really ripping, it's pretty hard to troll it. Um, <coughs> but it, and it generally rips up there. 
Please understand, Australia's like that, okay? So that, like, like that shape, we're on that little diamond, and the current just rips past us here. We're one of the strongest currents in one little Pacific area all the time. If you look at the current charts, from about Fraser to um, uh, Byron Bay is like always four knots or three knots when you get out a little bit. And it's because we're on the most decent part of Australia. So the current is a bit faster, the winds have to be in that area. Once you get south a bit or north a bit, they don't get the current with it. If you get tired, so they don't get the So, um, at Point Lookout, it's, it's nearly on the same uh, latitude as Byron Bay. So it goes out up to Point Lookout, right? And in line, it's nearly Byron Bay, which is the most decent point nearly. I think it's more further between or uh, what it runs with. So, um, it gets a lot of current. So that bad there that you're talking about, it's very good and it's always dolphin fish there. But patrolling it in the current is quite awkward. You're better off um, probably pitching live baits or pitching these lures out at the bay. But start 150 metres up on the bay. Okay. In all fats. Yeah. So north. North. North of the bays. Just the rope goes down and all the crap they make the uh, the pad out of. The fish attracting device is actually not the float, it's down on the road. The will start hanging off it. So you need to uh, work the rope, work up higher. And most people say that if they go right next to the buoy and drift past the buoy, there's nothing past the buoy. Nothing. Yeah, yeah. nothing. Never. And so, um, yeah, they'll go to either side of it, but they're predominantly right at the front, but they're down to deeper. Um, any other questions at all? Any questions you want on anything? I'm fishing. When you're trolling your skirts, are yes. you zigzagging like you are when you're marlin fishing? Or yeah, that's a good question, Woody. Um, I, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. I, I sometimes I look for current lines, and always on 50 metres, that's why I like troll 50 metres. It's a great spot, it's not too far out, and it's um, accessible from a little four bay bed too, if I take that out. Yeah. And, um, and you get a lot of the current lines along there too, you always get current lines along there. So you get dolphin fish off there, you get marlin, you get uh, rahu and the elephant. So um, you won't get Spanish mackerel, I don't think I've ever caught one in 50 metres, 48. <laughs> it's funny, the, I don't know how they work, but if I go to the reef, if I go to 200 metres to get to the reef, but they won't, you don't catch them in 200 metres or 100 metres or 50, 55 metres. It's always within 50 metres, so just the way they are. And spider mackerel is even more for them, they'll occasionally get them. I caught one of the fatty that's off the surface there once. Okay, yeah, once, nice. believe it or not, in a game yeah. off a couple of years ago. Yeah. Uh, but that, I was shocked. Yeah. Long in there, you know, yeah, sometimes the 24s, yeah. diamond reef, but they're generally in close. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's going to be mainly uh, dolphin fish, fire blue, and the other chip. Is that current line um, like nearly visible on the surface? Is it like putting yeah. green or water meets the blue? Yeah, it's, it sometimes could be blue, yeah. but it's uh, like it'll be uh, coral spawn. Or Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Like or just a big forward. string of seaweed yeah. and debris floating. Yeah. It's so always follow, there. Follow on that. Yeah, follow the edge, but yeah, yeah. sometimes um, I've caught fish on both sides and sometimes the dirty water and the clean water. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. one way and back in the other way. Yeah. Yeah, back inside and change sides. Yeah. Any questions at all? Yeah, got one. I'm just yes. looking at these, your red lines. Yes. That one. Yes, okay, so once at 50 metres, once. On the 36s, um, or 47 wall, yes, I do zigzag fairly heavily on the 36s. The reef tends to be on 68, it comes up like 63, 64 metres, and goes back down about 65, 66. I troll between the top and out to 70. I find a lot of fish on the back side with that sort of pelagic top fish, and on the inside or the top, you get here the snappers and bottom fish. So always the outside edge of the 36s. Let's try that. Um, well, my question mm. was actually what looking going out Sunday. Yes. Do I go out through the seaway, follow that down, and go down to the nine mile, or just go out through Toy and go straight uh, out of the nine mile? I I will send all of you. Here's our fish on Saturday. Sorry, I've heard a further question. Sorry. Yeah. I can go either way. Okay, either way. on Sunday. Yeah. Sunday's a better day, so you guys know that. Um, but Saturday, Friday tomorrow I'll have more info, but the weather's down on Friday. Um, not as good as it was. 
so I won't have as much info. Uh, Saturday afternoon, I have heaps of info. So I'm going to go Sunday and get info. Saturday. Yeah, so I'll send it way. to you guys with an update on your phones again, if you don't mind. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, just of what's happened in the last two days. Okay? And if you do go Saturday, you do get fish. You can tell no one to live on. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, you will get the shit. Are the miles How do you spot X? Uh, uh, are the miles of spot X? Um, they were up to about two weeks ago. Oh, really? But I haven't heard since the rain. But out there it should be still clear. Mm -hmm. I know the current's ripping. I might just have the fifties and all this today. Get, get a little bit of energy actually. Get the snapper, uh, current, uh, tray, everything actually. The fish at the bottom fish is exceptionally good. I don't know why. Yeah, that's right. How cool are they yeah, too? Yeah. The water's cool. So, like I said, 26.3 last week, 22.4. 26.7 last week, in close. 22.4 today. Wow. Yeah. But that's on the surface, that's a lot of pressure. There. So, it's coming from on the mountains. When you're, when you're out there, <coughs> do you find you can get more jigging or bait? Uh, on at the water? Bottom fishing, yeah. Uh, bottom fishing? Um, that's a good question. Uh, if I chase some pearl perch, um, I like to get my limit <laughs> and, and the fish. Um, and then I'll have fun with the jig. So I always fish bait first because I find I'm generally fishing prior to daylight and I find the bigger fish are, are more um, want to eat the bait. Um, and then once we've got close to our limit or got a few fish, then we'll switch and have fun with my jigs. Still gets a lot of fish and sometimes really good ones too. It's like really good in the box here. But it could just be that fish stuff on my line too. Um, yeah, the next seven I was actually on Burley because I really love Burley Birch fish. And I've got some really good grounds and touch fish. Um, but um, <coughs> bait fishing versus jigs, bait first, jigs later. That's any other thing. Yeah. Do you think it's worth trawling your own for water with one? Um, I do, so I so said, we do get them tomorrow morning, I haven't spoken to my mate because I've been here, but <laughs> uh, But he went today, he went trolling uh, in clothes for mackerel and right on daylight, before daylight. And uh, the, obviously you can't see the, the water colour, he hasn't been out, no one's been out until today. So he trolled around, trolled around, trolled around, trolled around and got nothing. And if we don't get a bite on daylight, then we're not going to get a bite normally. But, so then we just fished to something else. He went out to the 50s, as I was telling you. So he packed it up and went out while it's still early and, um, and got stuck in the bottom of this beautiful bottom fish yep. in a few hours. Um, but I didn't ask him, I don't know if I told you about I don't know where the clean meets the dirty. Yep. So we, we want to go chase uh, Wahoo tomorrow and the other things are around. We will. Uh, probably go out to where the clean meets the dirty, hoping that it's around 50 metres, but I dare think it's going to be around 60 or 70. Yeah. yeah. So if we're out around 70, we'll go straight to the pads and try the pads one. And we'll probably try skirts around the pads. Um, he may have liveys that got on today, so we'll probably throw some liveys as well. And no energy. Was there much debris around? No, he didn't say there was much debris today. And I did see that guy on Facebook and I don't know if it was a prank or not. But 40 foot boat with twin legs on the back. And my legs are all bent around here. I've seen that too. Yeah, it's a broad or short, I don't know what it was. But totally this boat. No. Right all in his gearbox and Yeah, gearbox and everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty nasty. So there's got to be, like, I was at a Peter Phil's house that day in the gear, and I got weird, it was just like raging, and it was like yeah. wobbles and everything floating down the corner. So I dare think it's going to be a bit of debris out there. Um, I wish we didn't have current as we turn into, into um, dolphinfish pads within no time. <laughs> but um, unfortunately, we have current, we'll take it away. We always get yeah, campuses up and score on that one. Um, <laughs> they're their own stuff happening down there too. So. Uh, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't know, mate. I think um, Debbie to be careful. If you're going out in the dark, be really careful. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I would be going, as I said, to the clear of water. In Troll crawl on that edge. Yeah. Or you just fish down riggers at the moment or, or Spanish or on the diamond. Yeah. Or that area. Yeah. Cool. 
And like with the dirty water, like the spotties and all that, they would have shut down completely. Uh, well, the dirty water is only probably on the top third of the column, probably, I think. Yeah. I would dare think. Alright, um, so if you. But it's clean on me. It's so warm, right? probably warm on me. Still probably cast metals and stuff, let them sink down. Yeah, we'll try as well. Yeah. I'm just saying. I might mean, see the mark ticks for sure the sound side. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they're there. And they'll both send through a screen. We've got to get the snap it today. Send through a screenshot, and they're definitely macro on this screenshot too. Okay. Yeah, but I think this could be a bit of a fight. Okay, um, I hit some mark grabs around. That's all that was with me last week. Most money I've ever seen in one pot on the whole person in my life. <laughs> Any of you guys mark grab? Any of you guys check grabs? <laughs> I feel my legs here, that's really good. Not in the legs, though. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's been a curse. But I don't have to be pushed out further since then. I might be really trying not to bounce or clearing my mouse and keep mine. Where it's a bit deeper and cleaner. Okay, so. Hope you guys can get there and get in a few, eh? And catch a few. Um, Alright, yeah, so we did a draw. Draw things. What time is it? I'll say. Um, so the next seminar is going to be on pearl perch at bottom fishing inside 150 metres. Okay. So let you know that. And then two weeks later, or three weeks later, I'm going to do one. We're trying to squeeze it I'm going to do one on. Deep tropping, but I don't know if you guys deep drop. Um, deep dropping. And then um, that will be two, towards the end of April. Then maybe this snapper. Okay, snapper will definitely be on by May. Um, and then in June, it's going to be Estuary Beach. Okay, so it's totally different to boat fishing. August is jiggy, and September is flat end. That's how it all goes. <laughs> Um, okay. So the August jigging one for the aim at Kingfish and that sort of stuff? Yeah, so King is Amberjack, Samson. That is us. Um, the, but on the snapper, uh, snap on me, we did two class last year, but because we're a small class, I try and get into one. So last, we normally do snapper on bait, snapper on lures, two separate ones. This year, I'll try and do a little one and make it a two hour sessions. Um, I wish I was on number two or something else, but um, it'll be uh, uh, bait, baits and uh, so the, the stamp will be plastics, um, canvas jigs, uh, micro jigs, and trolling on down as well. Try and get it all in. Plus bait fishing on the same time. How many guys here will fish for snappers? It's a bad interest. Okay, the quality did pretty well, mate. Yeah, well, like, pretty much consistent, consistently since last yeah. May, I've yeah, been able to get a decent sized snap on the close yeah. reach. Yeah. yeah. How about you the back there, mate? Just on plastics, yeah. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, it's a good one. Micro jig, I just put in real small micro jigs, tiny. Yeah, like 40 grams. Yeah, yeah, like 40 grams. Yeah, like 40 small ones, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Just on good fun, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah just on supplier and stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. It's a yeah. sergeant baker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The Kobe jigs work well too, like the, yeah, like the, the dog probably around jigs. those 80, yeah. 80 gram size, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, no, good. Yeah. Hands so, um, yeah. So, well, I was trying to squeeze that one night, but, but on the night I'll ask the guys, how many guys, little fish to bait fish, you know, and that would be the time spent yeah. versus the other subject. Um, okay, so first prize is about three hundred three hundred bucks, and it's going to go to Jake. Do you want to hold this up, mate? So I'm not cheating. <laughs> Jake, do you know Jake, guys? He's such a he's a good yep. show. He's a yep. Good guy too, by the way. <laughs> Train up. Well. Okay, so we're going to get the board, and so you, whatever number you are on the board, it's a number that I'll be like this to. Okay, we don't really need to. <laughs> That's my nephew. It's number four. So number four is it's Courtney. Oh. Now, no rules about it. 
On Messenger, good? Oh, on Messenger on there too, yeah. There's a, um, it is the most available number on Messenger, which is probably great for you. Uh, awesome. Awesome. Um, that's what I wanted. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Sorry. It is not the story. Number three, three is the So this is a gentleman who come along tonight because he is the fourth one. Thank you. Thank you, mate. Well done, buddy. Um, he's land-based, but he's a crazy caster. So he fish off a lot of rock platforms and after tuna and and, uh, and <coughs> mackerel and that. And uh, so if you've got to have a boat to learn to cast it on, you're going to go. That's the rules. Um, okay, next one, mate. The seven prizes tonight, last of them is the Lord of the Lord. The sixth one is, um, it's like this one. This is round, you know. Um, it's the hard one. Oh, it's the skirt. 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 So guys, um, thanks for coming along tonight and have a good night. It's, it's a hard one for Wahoo to talk about something because I know you need um, strong gear to do it right, right? So that's why it's a little bit not intimidating for some people. But You'll still get Wahoo on anything, but if you want to just go chase it hardcore, you just you don't need to up the ante a little bit. So that's hard for us. Uh, 13. Probably about one another. Okay, number 13 is Matthew Crow. Matthew. Matthew. Uh, Matty. That's Matty. Matty does good well. He's got a lot of good things for me at the time. <laughs> Thanks, Matty. Well done, man. What's that one? <laughs> Number seven, the last one, lucky last. So guys, um, you're welcome to hang around for half an hour, so I don't know if you can but we'll continue on that discount for you guys until the next seminar, okay? So which is at least uh, two or three or so. Um, it's number one, Craig Maddox. Hello, Craig. Thanks for coming along. Um, you walked with us, good questions downstairs. And um, with the weather, I'm sorry about the rain, but it's so busy. It's like it's like an eighty climax. You're like everything's there, you're ready to do it, but the weather's just flat and that hasn't been worked. So I can't do it. So so you just gotta get there and find it. But he's yeah. doing it for you tonight and do it on the day. And he's the guys that have been coming to our seminars. Um, and I think some of you guys are here maybe to finally.
actually getting the food fish and food is a bit better. So congratulations to you for doing that well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is it stop? Oh, stop, sorry. <laughs> that one? I don't know which one it is. Uh, oh, that, that throws out my question. So I was going to say, oh, are you going to put that on? Uh, uh, yes, we are. Yes, we are. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, oh, by what? One, one of the mates. Uh, oh. Do you actually uh, mainly run these on a Thursday? Uh, always on a Thursday, but... Yeah, um, so that's what I was going to say. Yeah. It's a class day of work. Uh,